Hi, my name is Ben and I'm a community member of the Subpunk Red core system for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. In this video, I wanted to showcase a few of the features that are due for release in the August slash September 2021 release or the 0.79 update. Um, now this video may be a little bit shorter than some of the other updates that we've released in the past couple of months as we have been trying to tackle a few more bugs that you may not sort of see as a part of the system, but there are some really cool changes that I still wanted to showcase to you today. Um, now, as always, please refer to the change along that I will link in the description below just so you can see the full updates, any changes, and all the fixes that we've implemented for this release. There's now additional support for automatic damage application for characters and MOOC uh, actor sheets. So what this means is when you have a character or a MOOC that is making an attack and they're rolling their damage, you can actually select the character or the MOOC that needs to take that damage just so you can uh, sort of calculate this a little bit faster on the fly. So as an example, let's say that we have our player character case who is making a ranged attack against a MOOC with armor with their assault rifle. Now from this range, we check this is going to be a DB of 13 hit. So what we'll do is we'll roll as case and we'll actually be able to see a few of the new functionalities that are implemented here. So what we'll do is we'll open up case's character sheet, we'll make sure that the assault rifle is equipped, which it is. So we have it here under our meet tab. We can see here that there are net runners, so they have a net tab, but that's not relevant for this section. What we'll do is we'll go and roll an attack. So we can see here that we have a base of 12, which means more than likely this is going to hit. We'll go confirm and we've rolled a 21 to hit. So that's going to hit. Now what we can do here is we'll click the little damage button up in the top right corner. That'll actually go off the stats of the assault rifle. This isn't an auto fire shot. This isn't an aim shot. So we'll just leave everything as is and we'll click confirm. It'll then say that we've actually dealt 21 damage and this is actually critical as well. So what we could do is we could also then go in, roll on the critical table and whatnot. Um, but what we want to showcase here is the fact that you see now that there is an option here to apply damage to the selected token. What we can do is if we select the token, and I can do this as the game master, select this MOOC and then select apply damage to selected token. What it'll do is it'll come up with a little confirmation prompt. This can be skipped if you hold down the control button, but this will actually deal damage directly to the character and will actually also work around any armor that they have in place as well. So what we'll do is we'll click confirm. It's actually now come up with a card saying HP has been reduced by 11 and armor ablation by one. So that also takes into consideration critical damage and whatnot as well. Um, do check out the changelog notes in terms of what does and doesn't apply. There are some caveats in terms of um, uh, you know, if it's applied directly or if there's a defender program that might give you armor protection. So please do refer to the changelog just to understand, you know, what's applicable and what's not applicable here. Uh, additionally, this also does uh, take into consideration if you're doing an aimed attack or if you're doing like a melee attack as well. So uh, if we take a look here, if I'll just bring this up. And let's say that we're doing another attack, but let's just say that this was a um, let's say that this was an aimed shot. So I just go back off the original damage roll here. And we'll say that this was aimed and we're saying that we're aimed for the head. We roll the damage here. We can see again that we got a 21, but this was just without any critical damage. But if we select the MOOC again, what this will actually do is go directly to their uh, head and also try and take it off the relevant armor that they have. So we'll do this with this MOOC selected. We'll go back to apply damage to select a token. It'll confirm that this can be applied to this MOOC. And again, we can see here the HP is reduced by 12 and the armor ablation by one. So if we bring up the MOOC character sheet here, we can actually see that it's reduced it. The first shot was against the MOOC's body armor because that was just a regular shot. And the second one has actually reduced it off their flak head armor accordingly, just like that. And so this will also update their hit points directly, just like this, so 17 out of 40. And, uh, and you can then continue uh, along with the combat. Now, this is a minor change, but it's important to note uh, RTG or Altosaurian Games did actually make a reference to the fact that Critical Initiative is a rule set uh, according to their um, you know, frequently asked questions. So as a part of that, if you're actually rolling for initiative as a uh, player character or even as a MOOC, um, if you do roll a 10, that will actually re-roll on the dice as well. So you could potentially have a critical success, which means that you roll another D10, or you could have a critical failure, which means that you roll a one and then you roll another dice accordingly. Now, if you did want to change this, you can do so in the configure settings option under the system settings. And there will now be a section that'll ask if you want to, um, if you want to roll uh, criticals on your initiative rolls, which is just here. So when enabled a critical initiative roll, good or bad, will roll and apply another die to the initiative roll. Uh, so that is now enabled by default, but if you want to change that, if you think that it may be a little bit too crazy for your rules, uh, you can disable that here as well as the other settings that are applicable to the setting. Speaking of initiative, it is gonna be a little bit nicer in terms of making the initiative roll. So we come over here to the combat tracker. I've got case as well as, uh, let's add in the MOOC as well. 
we'll actually see if we roll, or in this example, I will re-roll the initiative here. Uh, you can also see that as the case is a net runner, it's actually going to prompt us if this is meet or net initiative. So this actually comes back to the core rulebook. But let's say for this example that we just want to do meet initiative for case, we'll actually see that it uses an initiative card. So, so you have that sort of nicer, uh, sort of nicer, you know, showcase in terms of seeing what you rolled, and it uses a similar functionality of seeing if you click, you can actually see what the breakdown was. Uh, we'll do the same thing with the MOOC just to see what they get. And we can see that they got 13 on their initiative roll. So a major change in this release is the fact that uh, roles or you know character roles are now considered as items. Now, uh, from a gameplay perspective, this actually gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of being able to make individual checks. So for characters that you know, such as the nomad or the solo, who need to make particular attacks or roles with particular parts of their skills, you now have the ability to do this. So uh, for any characters that you bring into or that you already have as a part of the system as you upgrade to the 0.79 release, you should see that they're automatically applied with the proper role type. So if you go to the role tab on the left side here, they should have their ability set correctly. And then we can even just bring this across just to make sure that it's all correct. Um, and we can see here under roles that it's going to be a little bit different in terms of what we see here. If we're going to make a new character, so let's say here we just created a new uh, character type. Let's we'll call them blank. We can see here that the roles isn't yet set. And it's saying that we need to drag a role item for the sheet first. And if we go to role, there'll be nothing to find. Uh, so this will only be applicable for new characters. But if you do get stuck or get into a bind with any pre-existing characters, feel free to reference this. And you'll actually see under the compendium, there is now a roles folder. And here it actually has all the built-in roles. This does actually give you the flexibility, potentially, if you wanted to create your own roles as well. And uh, I'll see if I can cover that a little bit later. But say, for example, for this one, let's just say that we wanted them to be a nomad. What we could do is drag this straight onto the character sheet. It'll actually pick them up straight away. It'll have a default of four for the Nomad ability, just like that. Um, just similar to all the other items that we have in the system as well. You can look at this just to see their description, just to see all the settings in terms of what this configures. So we can see here for Nomad that this actually configures bonuses to their air, uh, land, sea vehicle checks, as well as their pilot skills. And that will actually uh, you know, configure and modify their roles accordingly. Uh, that's going to be similar to all of the other uh, role types as well. So for particular ones such as, you know, solos, uh, techs when they need to make particular checks, that should uh, should cover the bases there as well. I did want to cover this a little bit more just because this is a major change. So you should see with some of these roles, for example, if we bring up the solo. So because the solo does have quite a few breakdowns in terms of their abilities as a part of their role, if we look at this item, you can see here that there's quite a different selection of uh, you know, abilities as in terms of what's available to the solo. So we can see here that they have damage deflection, fumble, initiative reaction, precision attack, spot weakness, and threat detection, and so on. Um, so what we could do is if we bring up a, a character that we wanted to give them a solo, and we could essentially set them accordingly. So what we'll do is if we bring up blank, what we'll do here is let's say that we're going to get rid of the nomad. Uh, yep, so we just select that little sort of three dots that we can have here. Select that delete. It'll say that we don't have a role to find. That's fine. What we'll do is we'll come back to the companion pack that we had earlier. We'll bring down the solo. And we can see here that this has a breakdown of the abilities that are available to the solo at the moment. So uh, with a solo, for example, we can obviously break down their rank uh, in terms of what they have abilities for. So we can divide it accordingly based on deflection, uh, deflection, detection, spot weakness, and so on. So you could then decide, uh, you know, if you wanted to say dump everything into initiative reaction, you could dump it here and then uh, and that would change it accordingly. For characters that do have quite a lot of items, uh, again, in the system settings, there's actually going to be a new setting here that's called Enable Sheet Content Filter, and that'll actually allow you to quickly filter through if you have a number of items, just so you can quickly find the items they're after. So if you wanted to go through here, and again, this is a, a client-side option, the uh, yourself or the player characters or the users of the system can come here. They can enable the Sheet Content Filter, save changes. You may have to give the system a refresh just to uh, have this apply accordingly. So I'll just control F5 here, bring itself back in. And we can see here that there's now a filter text here as well. So this gives you the ability, if you had quite a lot of items on your character sheet, if you wanted to quickly find something, you could do a quick search here just to see it. So say for example, 
we can now just see the subadec. So uh, this is going to be very useful in situations where you're wanting to find quite a lot of, oh, if you have quite a lot of items, so you can quickly find the exact item that you're after, check their stats and open them up accordingly. Last but not least, in terms of showcasing today, uh, we did have a couple of requests from the community in terms of exotic weapons. So they are listed in the, the core rulebook. So what we've actually done is, as a part of the compendium uh, packs that we have built into the system, we've actually included those as well. So say, for example, if we bring up the weapons, you'll actually see a few of the exotic types. So the Constitution Arms hu Hurricane Assault Weapon, uh, and then, you know, so on and so forth with the, the other sort of couple of items that are there that are listed in the core rulebook. So Malorian Arms, Maltech Cowboy Grenade Launcher, and so on and, and so forth. So uh, do feel free to check that out if you did want to, uh, you know, bring those into your system accordingly. They're built in uh, now as a part of the compendium. Okay, that'll just about do it for this video. Uh, like I always say, there are a number of features that you don't always see in this video, so I definitely do recommend checking out the change log, just so you can see all of the hidden features or bug fixes that are implemented by the team that you don't always get to see. Now, if you are interested in terms of what we're implementing in terms of features and bug fixes, I will provide links uh, below to both the Discord and GitLab communities that we operate out of. If you're interested in providing feedback, comments, uh, if you want to add in new features or even contribute to the code yourself, please feel free to, to join our community and we'd love to have you on the team.